little bit this workshop, A Better Internet with Youth, Connecting the Dots. This workshop has been organized by the INSAF Network. Our partner, our co-organizer is Google. It is also the European Commission and we have had very strong support in this uh, from Facebook. Why a better internet with youth? Well, obviously, youth are the ones who are using internet uh, every day, all day. It's very part of, very much a part of their real life. However, we have decided that we'll organize this also with adults. So you're going to hear from youth to begin with, uh, youth with very interesting backgrounds, I think. But then you are going to vote, you are going to give your voice so we understand what you think is important. And then you're going to work in groups. And we have five group leaders who are going to come back to us at the end of the session and actually tell us the way forward. Let me tell you why. We will be meeting again in one year. How far will we have moved forward? Well, first of all, we have to know why we're moving forward, where we're going. And also, and this to us is very important as a European network, the European Commission Safer Internet Program comes to an end this year and a new program will be implemented for the next seven years. Therefore, it's very important to be forward thinking. The European Commission does listen to us and does listen to youth. So what you decide today are going to, that you think are going to be the most important ways forward will actually be picked up, will be picked up for Safer Internet Day next year, will be picked up for our interaction in the IGF next year, and perhaps hopefully also the National Eurodeeds, National Regional, but it will also be picked up by the Ministers of Education who are part of European Schoolnet, and as I say, by the European program in general. So I have six rather, no I have five, rather influential adults also sitting around the table to guide us and I will just briefly introduce who they are. So we have our co-organizer of this session, Marco from Google, who will be leading a group. Marco Pancini, there he is. We also have one of our big partners, supporters in this, Simon Milner from Facebook. Over here we have Connect Safely Larry Majid and Larry is now rolling out Safer Internet Day in the United States and has been an important partner for a number of years now I would say. Next we have Klaus Joth from the children and young people, who is representing the INSAF network because it's the only one of these moderators who's actually from INSAF. And finally, we have, um, we have, uh, sorry, Tiago, I was out of order, Tiago Tavares. And for many years now, Tiago has been picking up what we have been doing across Europe with INSAF, and he has been rolling it out in uh, Brazil and really making a fabulous job of it. But just let me briefly explain who we are because I keep talking about InSafe. InSafe was set up in 2004. InSafe is the European Safer Internet Network. However, now we have moved slightly and I would call us the Better Internet Network. In every country, and we have 30 countries that you can see dotted around on the map, we have an awareness education team. We have a helpline who informs the awareness and education team of the big issues that we need to tackle because they come up with the trends so that we can understand what's going on. We have youth panels up to 2,000 in any single country because we think that also we 
have to in, uh, all the time listen to the voice of young people, understand what they're doing, why they're doing it, what the issues are that they're facing, and how they would like us to try and help them overcome the issues. So that is an insafe centre, so you can understand that many, many people across Europe are working with us. But we're also uh, the organisers of Safer Internet Day and we work with 110 countries across the world reaching more than, 11, uh, than 10 million con uh, people on Safer Internet Day and in the month of February each year. We have been conducting a survey. We had 500 young people who responded to the survey. They answered a number of questions and we're going to begin by asking you to answer the same question to see what you think. David, can I ask you to explain the voting devices, please? Uh, yep, so some of you have got uh, a voting handset. Um, the first job is to turn it on. Uh, so halfway down on the left-hand side is the power button. Just turn it, press it and hold it down. Um, the display will come live. Um, and so the question that um, we actually pose as part of the survey, which will be interesting to get your views on what you think the response, the responses that, uh, that um, children would give uh, to this particular question. Um, so what's going to happen in a moment? I just press the green button. Um, so you've got six options, or eight, um, one to six, which actually is, is A to F. Uh, so A is well, A is one, B is two, and then on your display now you've got um, A to F, so corresponding. Uh, so you just choose your your selection, whichever you think is uh, uh, which of the following rights and responsibilities um, uh, that came out the most important in, in our survey, uh, and choose the one you thought um, was most important. Well, can I? Just modify a little because you didn't get the updated. Uh, we don't want you to guess. We want you to tell us, according to you, which of the following rights and responsibilities do you think should be the most important. You're going to hear what the survey told us in a moment, but now we want to hear about you from you. So which one would be the most important? I should feel safe online, number one. I should be able to manage who can see the content I post online, number two. I shouldn't have to see unpleasant or hurtful content. I should know what to do if I come across it, number three. I should be educated about staying safe online, number four. I should not be bullied online and should not bully others. And finally, I should be able to create my own content. So, of course, many of us are adults. We think that we won't be bullied online. We have to put ourselves also in the shoes of young people. What would you choose out of numbers one to six? Make your vote now. And you can see on your little box you've got A, B, C, A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay, how are we going with voting? Click to make your vote. Yeah. Okay, so what is it at the top of the, you've got a code at the top of your um, display. Um, so it will go back to the, the, the home screen when you have voted. Um, and the code corresponds with the left hand column. So when, when you voted, it's gone yellow. Let's see what you think. D. I should be educated. That's great because I represent 30 ministers of education. I have a great future ahead of me. Now, what did the young people answer? Well, the young people and the older, older people answer in this survey. Can we? Oh, sorry. I'm the clicker. I should feel safe online. 
I don't know how many adults were there amongst the 500 and not bullied online. It really surprises me, but perhaps gives me an opportunity to introduce. Uh, no, we have a second question, don't we? Now you've had a bit of practice, let's get the next question and see what you think about this one, if you disagree as strongly as we just did. So who do you think is or should be mostly responsible for shaping the internet? Me, young people, parents, schools, teachers, four, politicians, policy makers, five, companies, industries, web developers, including, including geeks, or lastly, which would be F, scientists or researchers. Yeah, Larry? Okay, there are two different questions. Let's go then with, and you're right, and this is precisely what we want here, lots of interactivity. So I would go with who should be, because we're projecting into the future and we're planning a strategy for the coming years. So who should be mostly responsible for shaping the future of the internet? Me, young people, parents, schools, teachers, politicians, companies, or scientists, researchers. They're waiting for some people. Three seconds. Go. Super. I can see there are a lot of people rubbing their hands in glee. I think this is a real good one. And uh, if I see correctly, yes, next we get companies, we get uh, developers, including geeks. So, let's look at what the survey said. Me, young people, maybe there are a lot of young people actually answering, and we didn't actually put companies because here we had to put them together, but companies, industry, web developers. So I think that here we get a little overview of what we're actually thinking. Well, most of us, we all know what democracy is. We last week had a very big event. It was called the Safer Internet Forum where we brought 400 people together in Brussels. And we had some, uh, I would say 30 or 40 very illustrious speakers, but sometimes they were very young entrepreneurs who were our speakers. And we asked them all, give us your five main words. Give us the five things that are most important to you for a really good internet. And there are a few things that stand out for me because I see education, information is almost as big. I see the word safe quite strongly. I see protection. I do see freedom out there on the thumb. Let's have a look what the young people said. Oh, it's me again. I find this interesting because here we have awareness, we have responsibility, we have social. Next to me I have Luis Cuende. Luis is six, uh, 18 years old now, we've known each other for a while now, Luis. Lewis has a very important role. He's one of the young advisors to the Commissioner Nelly Cruz. So he can actually go back to her and take some messages for here, from here and influence the thinking of the European Commission. Lewis also has rather a surprising background for a young person. Tell me a bit about yourself, Lewis, and above all, why we should be listening to you today. 
so I started when I was 12 years old uh, creating free software. Um, I released like a alternative to Windows or Mac, a free software operating system. And it was the first uh, software in the world integrating face login that is very common nowadays in Google phones. That is, uh, you, uh, you can log in with your face using the webcam. Um, and then I started uh, going into the startup scene and I started you know, going to startup accelerators and so on. And I created my first startup when I was 16 years old. There is like a um, startup with a uh, loyalty card to mobile phone. And then I won the contest uh, of the best programmer of Europe and they were 18 years old. And, um, and last year I created another startup that is related with Bitcoin and uh, virtual money. Um, and I think uh, you should listen to me because, uh, I mean, I'm not like uh, someone that doesn't have anything to say. I have things to say. Uh, I think they are pretty disruptive. I try to, to create new and fresh ideas because uh, the youth, I mean, we don't have a lot of experience, for example. We have a lot of creativity. Um, during time, uh, you know, older generations uh, start basing their uh, creativity on their experience. So it's not that fresh. But our creativity is more fresh as, you know, as we don't have that experience. So I think that's the reason. And I find the hand that you drew for us quite interesting. First of all, I must admit, I don't know what DRM free is, but I see that you want faster and cheaper, inclusive, which surprises me because you're very much a standalone, you're doing a lot of things alone, not so regulated, I understand. So can you explain a little bit these ideas that you've brought out? Yeah, so uh, starting in one of the... Tell me what DRM free is. So yeah, so uh, the DRM, DRM is, is that, uh, that like it's, it's a technology to protect content. So in the music industry and the film industry is trying to put DRM in the browsers, in the web, in the internet. So the problem is that technically, if you implement DRM in a browser, in a in a web engine, for example, uh, you like close the web itself because the web is made by uh, web standards that all browsers like uh, use, for example, Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer, they all work because they, they are working with web standards. So if we implement DRM, uh, we are like stopping like uh, being in open standards and we are creating standards for the music industry, the film industry. So I think uh, DRM free internet or web is necessary to, to go forward. Uh, more peer-to-peer -peer means that I think to respect the privacy of the users, we should just like start creating peer-to-peer -peer services. For example, uh, let's think about a peer-to-peer -peer Facebook, in which I have my data in my device, and then I can share my data with the network, but I'm not giving away my data to a company that is Facebook and then does things uh, with my data, for example. Um, well, I'm going to stop you there, and I can see that Simon is very interested. I see. He is maybe a young recruit. Oh, no, he doesn't like working for companies. He insists on having his own. Now I have Bastian uh, Swanenberg, and he is also a, a young entrepreneur. Bastian, tell us about what you're doing and why we should listen to you. Yes, thank you. Um, basically what I'm doing is I work at two companies. Uh, one company I founded myself, it's called Woodify. Um, we sell wooden sunglasses. We started out in uh, March this year, and the cool thing about it is that we use everything went via the internet. You know, actually, every single part of our company, we use the internet uh, for marketing, for contact with our customers, for paying, for um, finding suppliers. And that's pretty cool because um, it showed us possibilities of the internet. The second company I work at is Bleep. Um, Bleep is a telecom provider in the Netherlands. And what they provide is for just as low as 50 cents per day, you get unlimited data and unlimited texting. Um, and it's very cool because a lot of youngsters really like that. And that's basically what I'm doing. So how old are you? I'm 17 right now, since uh, two weeks. And why should I be listening to you? What have you got to teach me? Why I should be listening to you? Um, well, you should be listening to me, actually. <laughs> Turn it around. But <laughs> I think you should be listening to me because um, first thing is I'm in contact with a lot of young people. I mean, we got a, a group in the Netherlands with 500 young people. And I know what I think, I know what I want as young people. And they're all very creative. I, I won't call myself creative because I don't like talking about myself, but um, 
I think I know quite well what's going on on the internet and the, the young people are I think the most intensive users of the internet um, and so they must be represented. I mean I already find it hard to, um, to think of how my 10 year old brother is using the internet. Um, imagine someone who's 40 in trying to understand what my 10 year old brother is thinking when he uses the internet. So I think it's very important that young people um, are representing young people um, when it comes to internet and that's why you should be listening to me. Thank you. Now, I've often had the, the very great opportunity to work with young people and one question I always ask them uh, is what is the biggest barrier to being like you, to being an entrepreneur and really doing things for yourself? And I know you still have to go to school, which may seem pretty, pretty dumb when you're doing what you're doing. So what is the biggest barrier, the real big thing that we could make life easier if we could overcome it. Um, would you like to answer the first, yeah. Louis? I think, uh, for example, in the case of Spain, it is education. It is educational model that is really updated. Uh, it's a model in which you have to memorize a text and then write it down in an exam. Um, and that, that's like, I mean, that's not the active culture you need to, to have to start things, to start working on your own, to start companies and so on. So I think the problem is the educational model that we have changed the educational model from the from the passive active to, to, to the to the active aspect of the education. Okay, and when we first spoke you actually explained this to me and I said, Well, you could have done with our experience because we could have helped you negotiate with a school where they could learn from you and you wouldn't have had to go all the time and follow all the lessons. So we met a bit late. What about you? What's the biggest hurdle? Well, I think it's school too, because um, there are a lot of things that I want to go to. Um, for example, this conference, it's very lucky that it's during my uh, you know, autumn break. Otherwise, I would have been allowed to go. Um, lots of other workshops and cool things in the Netherlands. Um, where I want just two hours, you know, skip school, but they don't allow me to go there. And I think that's the biggest issue. It used to be that people didn't listen to me, but because I was younger. And last week, actually, I met someone who said, yeah, you're just 17, come on, you don't understand that, but that's shifting. Less and less people say that. I think the biggest barrier remains school, because people think without school you're nowhere in this world, and I don't agree with that. So we really have a message to take back to those ministers of education. Now we're going to come from another side, and I think these young people rather like school. It's helping them succeed. And here on my right, I have Vivian Lochernier from netmission.asia, and I have her young colleague, Hamere, who I believe won an essay competition, and that's why we're here. So can you please tell me why we should be listening to you when we're thinking of the future of Internet, and a little bit about what you do to make it a better place? and introduce a Mary also. So, hi guys. The reason why that you have to listen to me because we are representing the Asian cities and countries because we are coming from Hong Kong. And we believe that actually, although the internet is universal, there are still difference between the attitude of using the internet uh, between the Western country and the Asian country. And as NAP Mission Ambassador, we actually hold a vision that we hope to encourage youth participation in internet governance and digital inclusion. And that's why we are here in order to contribute our voices to the internet improvement. And we hope that we can promote the digital inclusion and help a harmonious internet environment. And Hamura, who is from the NetWide program, is actually initiated by the NAP Mission program. Because I'm a university student, and we believe that actually we can have a more inclusion of younger youth like Hamira, who is a secondary school student. And that's why we are here. Thank you. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't think you quite told me why I should be listening to you. What have you got to tell me that I don't already know? Any idea? Um, we are the youth panelists, right? And um, from the survey we just did right now, you know, like who should be responsible for the future development of the youth? And the most uh, voted answer was me. So, 
<laughs> so, so <laughs> there you go. Thank you. That's a very good answer. I really put you on the spot. And on our other side, we have Nicola Douglas. And Nicola has been to the IGF three times now. Tell us a little bit about yourself, but also you've been here three times. You should have had an influence. Have you? And if not, why not? I certainly like to think so, but um, I don't know. I don't know. I, have, I haven't actually uh, got out there and investigated whether I've had an influence. It would be nice to know if someone's tweeted something that I've said and that's gone on uh, gone on to influence the policy or something. I've, I've certainly been in a few workshops now that I have, have met people and talked about policy and all. Um, so why should you listen to me and who am I? So, oh, that's my name. Um, that's you. 80, yep. I'm 18 years old. Uh, I'm here with uh, Childnet International and I'm a youth delegate as part of their YIGF project. And as Jan said, three, uh, it's my third IGF. Um, and I think the real reason uh, that you should listen to me, as opposed to, uh, not as opposed to, but as well as listening to Lewis and Sebastian, is that uh, I'm like other young people possibly, because not all other young people are as good as these guys are. <laughs> um, not all other young people are as amazingly entrepreneurial as these two here are. And I, I would respectfully disagree with Bastian when he says that it's school that uh, provides a major barrier for uh, me and for my perspective. Um, and from what I definitely see of other young people, uh, I think the two, two, maybe three major barriers uh, to this would be uh, awareness and knowledge, uh, because you certainly have a lot of specialised knowledge for this that I definitely don't have and would love to get, so maybe I can talk to you later about that, because code is uh, code is something I don't understand and would like to. Um, something else, maybe a lack of confidence, uh, a lack of willingness to um, to speak about these issues, because uh, there is a certain social stigma um, surrounding some of these issues. Uh, the, uh, what was it, the second, the second house survey was then, like, computer companies, web developers and geeks. There's a stigma from my perspective, definitely, where uh, from sort of where I live and the school I go to, there is a stigma attached to that word geek. Um, and it, it's I think it's travelled down through history. You can see it you can see it in the etymology of it, um, right back to Shakespearean times and beyond. Um, and I think the other thing is the, the other thing is the, is the problem with young people, or not the problem, but something that maybe is just part of the culture that we live in. Uh, the other problem I think is motivation. Um, because you guys are really motivated to do what you do, you have a personal cause, and you're going in there to do something. You see that it benefits you. Young people are constantly asking, or we're constantly asking ourselves, what what can I get out of this? What what's in it for me? Um, and as are we all, I think uh, that's, that's something we do. Um, and what I I personally ask myself, yeah, what what's in it for me? What can I get out of this? The reason I'm here is because I'm interested in these things. I think I have something to say. Um, and the reason. Uh, sort of other young people might not be uh, so might not be so interested because they don't really see how it pertains to them, and I think uh, that's something that we should probably be educating them about because it definitely does. So I hope hope you listen to me now. Um, <laughs> I hope I gave you a good enough reason. To thank. Well, oh, very interesting. I'm going to ask you to give me now just one wish, and as we saw that actually me and then industry seem to be the most important. It's hard to address a wish to me, so I would say you should formula formulate it to companies, industry, and Greeks. Think about it um, while we go to our remote moderation and ask if we've got any input because we have young people from the United States, we have young people from Brazil. No, okay, no news from our remote participants. I hope they're listening. Uh, let's hear your wish. Just one wish. If you could have any wish, what would it be? We'll let you each have one. So I guess I'm starting off. Um, it's kind of funny though, my wish. It's pretty um, dorky. Um, one of my five wishes was to have a more precise translation website. Um, <laughs> coming from Hong Kong, I am coming from Hong Kong, but I am not Chinese, and we do learn Chinese. It's a mandor mandatory subject at school. So whenever the teacher gives us homework, especially if it's essay writing, um, I can find in translation websites. But uh, I get caught red-handed because the translation <laughs> websites like translate it into something completely different. It just 
makes it more like poetic or something like that. Um, so it's the teacher obviously knows it's not my work because in class I you know I don't so um, yeah the, um, translation more precise yeah so I have yet to stumble. Okay, what? maybe we should be looking at Google Translate here and see if they can up the quality, make it less poetic. <laughs> um, yes, your wish. My wish is very simple. I just want there will be no um, internet scams online. It's because I received so many phishing emails from different kind of fake company that's telling me that I win the prize. So it's so important to me that I never win a prize before, and it's hope that. It's because these kind of phishing emails are annoying, but at the same time, they will try to get my personal information, which would induce my real life in reality, and it's my wish. You wish, Bastian? Well, I think there are a lot of talented young people, you know, we've got amazing web designers, we've got amazing coders, people with really bright ideas, but the problem I always see when I speak to those people, they say, yeah, I'm, I can design awesome websites, but I, I don't know how to make them, you know, how to make them work. And well, my wish is this better collaboration between young people and that they work together because I think none of them is successful or great enough to make really awesome things on his own. But all together they can make a really big change and I think that's very important. And that's my wish. A good one. Yes. So my, my wish is to keep the web open and working with open standards. So we are constantly moving to this uh, area of mobile devices and we're starting to to use the content of the web of the internet from Wallet Gardens, from Google, from Apple, and I think we have to to stay using the web as a vehicle to you know to use standards and and interact with every kind of device and every content over the internet. And Nicola, any wish? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, mine would have to be the conscious interaction. Uh, so what I meant by that is something that we discussed last year. Um, in our workshop that we ran about uh, freedom of expression and social media in that uh, young people often don't know the line uh, between young people and all people in general don't know the line between the comments that you can make um, the opinions that are right to express and the right way to express those opinions uh, in the most constructive way um, in the way that's best for discussion, best for debate um, and a way that involves uh, insulting other people um, and, and also with that sort of idea of conscious interaction the ideas, the things that are good to express and the things that aren't. So uh, some of the comments you will receive in trolling or um, anonymous speak online or even just abuse of general um, are, are not. So I think it would be nice to see uh, more education in order to, um, more education from everyone, uh, ISP, government um, and uh, just educators, civil societies, just to uh, educate people about, um, about that line and to give them informed decisions about um, how they how they express themselves. Very interesting. I'm just wondering if we have any comments from the floor because you know this we really do want to be interactive. We have some very wise people sitting around the table with super ideas. Do we have any comments on the wishes that we've heard? Uh, would you like to add something? Just speak up and give your name. Okay. Well, opening up. Yes. Thank you, Klaus. It's just a small comment because I've been in the in safe program, the safe internet program for let's say two years or something like that. And I think definitely what you have said is saying that well the next generation of the program should be better. That's for sure. Yeah, but we can't hear you. I'm curious among the teen panelists. Internet safety, does that resonate with you? Do you? Is that a term that means anything to you or that do we need to move on? Kind of uh, the follow up to the gentleman's question. Yes, Nicola. I'm happy to take it if someone else would like to give comments, but I think that for me, um, I'm growing up a bit, so I'm 18 now, um, and for me, uh, internet safety uh, is still important. Yeah, I think so. I think uh, it's always important to be uh, identifying with everyone, sort of like telling everyone, because the internet is evolving, it's changing all the time, and there are new dangers. There are new dangers that arise. So I think that yes, it's still important to have education. On the other hand, 
I don't all you know for for me I think I think I've received enough education from school and um, so sort of the the education that, that I get from school is sort of it, it's done its duty and I think I'm I'm well prepared enough but I I think it should continue because I think it still has a role because uh, young people um, they are th their parents don't necessarily know there will I think there will come a point where parents will be able to teach their children um, the right way to do these things um, because obviously our parents no my parents didn't grow up with the internet so they weren't able to teach me how to interact safely online um, whereas I will be able to tell my children that uh, so I, I think um, right now yes but maybe in the future not so much okay um, Bastian first yes well, I do care about the internet safety, but the only reason that I do care about it is that I have to manage financial details and email addresses of 5,000 customers. But before that, I didn't really care about it. It was just like, I want to use my computer and I want to do cool things with it, but I don't care whether it's safe or not. I mean, you, it's not something you see or feel unless you're being hacked. And I think lots of young people don't really care about it. So, I mean, do they have best cut look on their phone because otherwise people will start reading their WhatsApps? But, you know protecting against viruses or something like that, you know, why would they care about it? It's not something they find interesting. So we have a good reason here, and that is um, your 5,000 customers. So it's more confidence, security. Before we go to our next panelist, we actually have a comment here. We have two comments from the public. Yes? Uh, hi, I'm uh, Jeremy Buckman from the Alana and Madeline Foundation. I, I'd like to kind of throw a bit of a spanner into that. Um, in terms of my my contention for a little while has been, you know, Mark Prince, you had that idea of digital natives you know, and, and um, digital immigrants, which is kind of a tired cliche thrown around these days, but which has been um, taken away from a lot of its original meaning. But my contention has been that um, it, it is about engagement, and so the, the analysts were talking about they've learnt enough. I think the comment was they've learnt enough from from school in terms of cyber safety and. Um, being responsible online, that kind of thing. But will the generation, will that digital divide continue, will be perpetuated? Um, because you've still got the same proportion of disengaged youth. Um, not, and this is not just about the internet and technology, but you know, uh, you know, across citizenship generally. And um, I, I agree it is education's role to, to kind of tackle that. Uh, and is it heading in the right direction in terms of engagement? Thank you. An interesting point. If young people aren't on board and really engaging, will there really be parents who are able to lead their children, or will we still need an internet safety program where new people have your own children? I saw one further comment up there. Yes? I Hi. think you need to move forward to get a microphone. Oh, you've Hello? got a microphone. Oh. Super. <laughs> yes. Hi, my name is Rosalie, and um, I'm here from Denver, Colorado. Um, my husband's in the private sector, and I'm a mom. So my question would be, um, as I've grown, I have learned each step of digital media along the way. My children, however, have grown up with it already existing, and that is a huge difference, and I'd really like to hear kind of what the young people on the panel have to say about their experience growing up with these things already in place and um, how they feel uh, their interaction with the internet and safety um, has, has been. So we'll get you to answer that thing that you wanted to answer the question and then we're going to throw more questions to the floor. Yes? Um, actually, I would like to answer about the internet safety is because I think that it's important to have internet safety at present, but also in the future. It's because I like internet safety is the prerequisite in order for us to have internet. If we cannot secure that the internet is safe, we cannot do anything at all. It's from a point of view. For example, if you walk down the street and there are so many robberies, so many killings, and that's why you can't even walk down the street, you have to stay at home. And it also applies to the internet that, that if you cannot go the online safely. You cannot do any function, you cannot use the services or you cannot do anything with the internet because all the information, all the words in the internet are incredible and you cannot trust it. And that's why it is important to have internet safety at the present but, at, and, but also to improve it in the future so that all the things will go all right. 
thank you. And I think Henry wanted to say something. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, just. I mean, yeah. Of course. I mean, um, actually, uh, regarding the internet safety and you know what I think about it. I mean, um, I have younger siblings and younger cousins that I often take care of and um, I, I, I hand them, you know, when I'm tired, I don't want to entertain them physically anymore. I just give them my, my smartphone and let them use my laptop. And I, and I, and I worry often like whether they, they're exposed to um, pornographic content. I think that's the thing that I'm um, most concerned with because, for example, um, I mean, kids are curious, but I don't think um, curiosity in pornography is off is most of the time intentional um, an example that I've kept on mentioning um, in previous workshops in this IGF was that of Lego and legs all right so say a, a kid really likes Lego he wants to search up Lego so he types in Lego in the web search but then we all make mistakes right I mean I right so what if he misspells it legs you know they're completely different things and then pornographic content may come out and although it may cause unease to the kid because they're so young and they're like what is this um it can also stir early curiosity in, in pornography and uh, yeah that's it yeah one last comment in the video yeah yeah um yeah i want to discuss in this internet safety thing because uh well i think internet safety is 90 percent common sense but um but going about you know, talking about pornography, for example, uh, there are some studies that are demonstrating that it is uh, not bad to expose the child to pornography. I mean, it is like uh, exposing the world at least. So the internet is all about being open, being uncensored. So why to censor content if they will see it in 10 years or two years or whatever? I mean, there are some studies you can catch them in the web, uh, and they clearly say that there is no any benefit in just cutting content and turn it on the internet. So yeah, I think that was interesting. So uh, I'm going to move on quickly, otherwise you won't have time to discuss. Look at that though. Boys call on web developers while girls call on politicians. I think we're seeing a real example of that here. Another issue that's come up, diverging responsibilities, and I think we're hearing this also from our panel. We have our policy makers, uh, our politicians, who are there and meant to help with regulation and education. Well, are they really and are they doing it properly? Web developers, safety by design, is it being taken into account? Young people, do they really respect each other online? Because what our helplines are telling us is that the problems on internet, that 80% behavior of one young person to another, and 20% other problems. But I'm not going to go on there because I think when you come to a workshop, you want to talk and work, I would hope. And I said that we are going to now work together and try and help us choose a strategy for the coming year so that we can meet again at the IGF 2014 and actually say, well, that was our strategy. That's what we wanted to do. Did we achieve it? Yes or no? See how good we are at that. When once you've chosen your strategy, and it can be anything at all, we are going to vote at the end. We're going to vote on the strategies of the five groups to see which one really comes out on top. But it's not enough to choose a strategy because wrapped up in that, we need to know, well, in fact, who are you addressing? Are you addressing the teachers, the companies? Who is most involved in your strategy? And thirdly, give us a couple of real concrete actions that these stakeholders are really meant to take over the next year for, I would rather say, a better internet. So now you're going to turn around. Can our uh, group leaders please put up your hand again so people can really see who you are. So we have five reporters. So if you can move around them with your chair, you're going to have half an hour to actually work on this, come up with your answer, and I'm going to ask our young people each to go into a group so that we know that we've also got the voice of youth in our group. Over to you, you have half an hour. Are there any questions about what you're meant to do? 
super. So we're going to get six great stra five great strategies, but I can assure you we will use them all. Off you go into your groups.
You just have five minutes to go. Now we're going to go around and collect the name of your strategy and we are going to hear from the best. Five minutes to go.
Okay, I think we're good. Yeah. Time to go back to your seat. So far, I picked up three. Just correct me if I'm wrong. I've got privacy by default, am I right? I've got a global declaration of responsible online users, I'm right? Better collective social norms and values. Oh, sorry. Do you want better people? Better. Oh. <laughs> Are you right with the one I got? Fine. So while we're talking, uh, while we're about to vote and we need time to get these into the machine, um, we're going to get you to give one, one sentence to do some real world selling of your idea. You've got one sentence to convince people. I'm going to begin with privacy by default. One sentence, please, please Carl. <laughs> yes, one sentence, sell it quickly. And which is the name of yours? Privacy by the, oh, sorry, I was, yes. That's perfect, that's perfect. E-confident carers. Give us a pitch. Uh, the missing voice from the IGF is that of parents who are not here because they're partners of IT company people. They're here because they're parents. And we want them here next year. No offence, by the way. We want them here next year, and we want, them to, we want to help them become e-confident carers for our young people. Thank you. Raising awareness, analyzing challenges, education, education, education. Who's giving the pitch? Yes, Marco. Yeah, we, we had a very interesting group of multi stakeholders really representing all the, all the scope, and uh, I think from, uh, from the discussion uh, we analyzed uh, some important challenges and we came to the conclusion that uh, analyzing the challenges, then creating uh, awareness on, on the problems, brings uh, to focus on education. And education is, uh, is, uh, is, is important also because it's involving all the different actors. Uh, the parents, uh, the, the industry providing tools, so it's really inclusive as, as an activity. Thank you. Uh, yes, we'll let you add something. than a sentence. <laughs> um, global Declaration of Responsible Online Users. Give us your pitch. I've been told to keep it to a sentence by my group to prove that we can. So the sentence that I, we put together was, we don't believe that changing how the internet works is the answer, but it's how it's used that is necessary. Um, we propose a declaration of responsible online users that will be signed by other users. They're not by government, signed by the users itself. So it's sort of a worldwide AUP acceptable use policy. Super. Better collective social norms and values. Larry. Can And the last one is inclusive, empowering policy. Is that you, Thiago? Yes? Yeah. So um, our group uh, highlighted that internet uh, should be designed to the future generation. That's one sentence that I got from George. Uh, 
and also uh, the capacity building uh, should be a priority, especially in developing countries. That was a contribution that we received from our colleagues from Africa, uh, and also from the Cambodia and uh, Nigeria uh, representatives. And this inclusive and empowerment strategies is absolutely mandatory to uh, give people, give young people, uh, qualified voices at uh, conferences like IJF and also ICANN. And I think we're getting more than a sentence. Yeah. <laughs> And so, that's it. That's it. Super. You lead me into one of the questions. I find it a rather difficult question that I meant to answer on my session report. Who considers that they are from developing countries? Um, is your country a developing country? I meant to give this statistic for the report. Okay. Super. So, are we ready to vote and to see the winner? You might have to switch your device back on if you remember how to do it on the left button because we haven't touched it for a while. So what are you going for? E-confident carers. Raising awareness, education, 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 privacy by default, global declaration of responsible online users, better collective social norms and values, or inclusive empowering policy. What are we voting for? <laughs> How are we going? There are some people, their vote's not going to be counted if they don't get it there quickly. Five seconds. One, two, three, four. There are still a couple. Five. Finished. Just got in there. So I now announce the winner. If you move it along so I can just read it. We have a winner. E. Confident Carers. We... <laughs> have second we <laughs> second we have better collective social norms and values and third we, with 19.2% we have education 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 so you now have three minutes each to tell us how we're going to implement this strategy Starting with our e-confident carers. Oh, sorry, I missed one thing. We also had a suggestion from our remote participation in India. And can you quickly tell us what it is, please? We basically had a similar discussion about the different points and, and we actually focused again on, on, on the importance of understanding that it's quite a complex issue and it can be quite different in different regions. So we, we spent quite a, quite a while talking about specific contexts in India, which is one of the vastly developing countries where you have a situation where there's some kind of digital revolution and all of a sudden a lot of people, almost everyone is going online more often and for them access is becoming very easy but they are not necessarily completely aware about all the risks and the opportunities. So I think we more had a discussion about the fact that it's important to approach it globally, to have some kind of global campaigns, such as, say, for Internet Day, where you can sort of have a similar thing, which is quite different in, in local context. Um, and that's sort of the main thing. Thank you. Okay, Simon. And then we'll go next for social norms, because I know you've got to go to your workshop. Sorry about that, unless you name someone to well, give. I'm actually interested in naming someone because I don't know if I even know this is the strategy. Okay, so you name someone while we're busy here with Simon. Super, super. Nicola, feedback from the group. Uh, so what we really discussed, again, the missing voices and uh, parents. So what was the problem with parents as a group for, for learning things and gaining knowledge about the things that they need to 
to educate their to educate their children, and um, because after all, it, it all starts at home. Everything starts at home in that sort of a clear environment, or indeed with with carers themselves, whoever is looking after the children and is engaged with children from that young crucial age when they're you're learning building habits. So the problem with parents is uh, that they don't have the they don't have the time. In Britain, we find that if you say okay, here's an evening about internet safety, parents don't come along. Um, they're, they're, they're simply, they simply don't have the time, they're busy individuals, they have, they have jobs, they, they have lives, uh, and they need to earn money for their family. So what 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 we're trying to, to find out is, is the solution for this. So what we suggested was a combination. Uh, parents learn best from each other, so if you have a problem with your child, who do you ask? You don't ask, um, you, you don't ask an expert, you, you go to someone who ha- who's another parent, um, who has experienced this. So we want expert peers um, that can talk with each other. Um, we'd also uh, maybe looking into getting app developers, so I think the concrete, so app developers, people that can create a, a, maybe a technology that can sort of teach less for young people. So, but what I do promise is that you're going to write it down for me because I do want these written, really short, but written so that we can really put it out as our declaration from the IGF. Can we have someone now from your group? Yes? Um, So we had the collective of social norms. Um, I think the point of collecting social norms is because worldwide, we're just all human. And we need to teach our children how to be human, how to be kind, how to, sh- how to do those basic human things that we all want to make this a better world. And that is how we're going to make a better internet. Um, and then, obviously, so besides using social norms, uh, just as you mentioned, needing to have that education awareness for parents so that way it becomes a commonplace thing that while mom is shopping online, <laughs> her children are watching, hey, I have a password, or I did not give them, you know, my favorite color and my dog's name and address, or, or, or I did, and depending on all these things. Super. It's amazing how the two meet, but we really, you can join us on our forum, uh, the InSafe forum at saferinternet.org, continue this discussion or on our Facebook site. So, Marco, can you tell us education, education, education? Yes, you want, so you want from me this time? Okay, cool. And uh, in terms of strategy, again, we, we spent some time in identifying the challenges and uh, a good job in terms of uh, not looking also at the technical issues like for example uh, the, the safety online and the problem of spam but also uh, thinking about some of the policy challenges that we are facing in this moment like for example surveillance, the problem of surveillance online and so on and uh, we, we then move uh, in, in looking into raising awareness as, a, as a, uh, an opportunity for us to understand raise awareness again in all the different internet audience on of these issues and then we finalize uh, the, the strategy by focusing on, on, the, on education as a way once we, we you know what are the problems to fight collectively a way to overcome these, these problems thank you very much and I would like just I, I would like to point out that actually we worked very very hard with young people over the year and you probably see this book we actually wrote it with young people so that they have a way of starting the conversation and reflecting because they don't really have confidence with their parents being able to lead them. If anyone here is from Bali or wants to take home a whole bundle for their class, please come now to our booth. Um, We had a word from India because we had a suggestion from India. Can you give us a quick word? We have one minute, please. Mustafa. Hi. uh, This is one of the wonderful tools. We could use it for awareness and education. In India, 2014 Safer Internet we are planning to celebrate. Uh, I would like to call observe, uh, not a celebration anymore, it's an observing. Uh, we would like to uh, observe as national wide, that's 1.3 billion people definitely. So it is a 50 person day, we 60, 600 million people will be observing 
safer internet day in India, and that's what we are hoping. We we, uh, rec we are requesting European Commission to write to our Prime Minister to have it a national wide, and this is every school, every uh, you know district. We could reach the message to the very grassroots level to the parents, to the teachers, and that's really uh, as uh, the remote participant mentioned, we should have a global campaign on safer internet day. That's what I urge the European Commission to take it up in a very high level. Thank, Thank you. Thank you much. very much because you actually said what I was going to say at the end. So not quite the end. Just one word from anyone who wants to because there's another group waiting to come in. I think you've had your say, you spoke. Did you have something I think that I saw you really itching to say something? Okay. I would really like to thank you. I think we've managed to do something interactive, but I feel that this is just the beginning. InSafe does have a Facebook profile where you can come in, you can join us, you can say the things you want to say, because I really believe that it's creating a better internet together, and this is why it's our slogan for 2014. So let's do it, but please, can the group leaders make sure someone in your group is going to send me a few words so that we don't lose the very important things you've done together. I'd really like to thank our young people who I think are teaching us and leading us the way in many ways. I'd like to thank the European Commission and Google for being co-organizers. I'd like to thank Facebook for permitting us also to get an extra person here and the InSafe and the Safer Internet uh, team. Um, we have our man who carried these hundreds of kilos of voting tools all of the, from the UK to the, uh, Bali. Uh, so thank you very much for your participation and please just let's keep going together to create a better internet together. Thank you.